Hey everybody, it's time to hop aboard the Big Thunder Podcast. Wild this podcast to the wilderness. Yeehaw! And here's your hosts, Bo and Evan. Hey everyone, welcome to the Big Thunder Podcast. We're your hosts, Bo. And Abby. A Disney favorite restaurant finally opens, plus a change in parks policy might affect your ride wait time. And we are going to play the fun game, if we were the Imagineers behind Magic Kingdom expansion, what would we build? And stick around to find out the one thing we will always pay for in Disney World. Ooh. Let's throw in a little curveball there. Yeah. To the news. There's two real big stories that happened this week. Do you want to start off with like the fun one or the not so fun one? Let's go. Not so fun. Get it over. Get it over. Rip off that bandaid. All right. Uh, Are you familiar with DAS Pass? Yes. I'm trying to remember. I think it stands for Disability Accessibility Service. Disability Access Service. Yes. And so what it is, it's a wonderful program that's offered at Disney World for people of all ages who might have a disability that would cause them to have less than a magical time doing things like standing in long lines in crazy heat. Um, So what it does is you um, have to apply for this program. And if you're approved, then when you go visit the parks, you can do things like if you want to ride a ride, you can check in at the ride and they'll let you know when to come back and you bypass the line so that you're able to get on and ride and then move on instead of having to wait in line. Essentially, it's like a virtual queue. But even better than a virtual queue because you pass all queues. You just like go up and ride. Right. There are some slight changes to this program starting May 20th in Disney World and then June 18th for Disneyland. A couple of things that are positives for it is the enrollment for it has been extended. So typically when you're approved for it, you get it for 60 days. Mm. Uh, Now they're extending that to 120 days. One thing that may cause some problems for some people that, you know, if this is something... Uh, that they're used to getting is party sizes Mm -hmm. is changing. So it used to be just six people. It doesn't matter what they are. Uh, But now it's qualifying immediate family or four people. So, for example, if you have the DAS pass Mm -hmm. and you have six people in your immediate family, Mm -hmm. you're all set. But like, let's say if you have friends, you don't have immediate family. Only four of them get to go with you on this program. Yeah. Uh, one thing, like we noted, it is sort of like a virtual queue. It's not instant access. That's one thing I think people think the DAS Pass system is, is that you could just like immediately like go up and bypass the line. That's not how it works. Oh, no, no. You have to come back at like a designated time. It's kind of like what the old Fast Pass used to mm-hmm. be. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it is a system that got abused. Mm-hmm. And Disney had to make some changes because of it. And they're kind of cracking down on when you can use it, who qualifies. um, And we'll see how that works out. So do you remember what people were doing to abuse the system? Well, I know one of the things that got several YouTubers in trouble and got banned from Disney was they were providing like guided tours. Mm -hmm. Um, So Disney has some really awesome guided tours that you can do through Disney. But some people, it's called like third party uh, people, they will do tours on their own and then get paid for it. Well, that's like frowned upon with Disney. And what they would do, they they would abuse the DAS system and then they would use that as a way to skip the line Mm -hmm. and get people around the parks faster. So that's a big that's a big bummer. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, And then the last thing is part of this is what's called DAS Advanced. This is where you're able to book two one hour return windows per day for select experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like when you first sign up, you automatically like sign up for a time to go for these experiences as opposed to having to go up and get like the virtual QS system. Yes. And this program is free, whereas like Genie Plus or individual lightning lanes, you pay for those to be able to. Maybe make the line experience shorter, but DAS is a free program, and that was also a reason why it was getting abused. So, All right, you ready for the fun news? Yes. So this is the fun news. Uh, 1900 Park Fair finally reopened. Yes, 1900 Park Fair is a table service restaurant found at the the Gland. The the Gland Florida. (laughs) The Grand Floridian. It closed in 2020 during the time of 2020, and... It took forever for them to reopen, and they finally reopened Mm. yesterday. Yep, it's been slightly rethemed. Originally, the theme was, like, 
England. So you, it's a character dining. So you'd have like Winnie the Pooh and Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. and Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense because the theming at the Grand Floridian is Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. The rooms are all Mary Poppins inspired right now. But now the theming for this character dining experience is uh, not just people who made wishes, but for those who made their wishes come true. That is nonsensical. It's a stretch. Okay. But here's what we got. So we've got uh, Aladdin as Prince Ali. Uh-huh. We have Cinderella. Mm-hmm. We have Mirabelle. Uh-huh. And then we have Tiana uh, in her Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I thought about th- putting this as part of Bayou Watch, but <laughs> I, thought, a- I thought that was also a stretch. Yeah. So. I don't love... Okay. It seems random. It seems real random. I love that, like, obscure Aladdin's there. Like, that's fun. Sure. I've, I love Cinderella all the time. Um, Tiana, I don't love this Tiana look. People, like, sure. love it. People are, like, obsessed it, with like, it. R- adventure Tiana. Adventure Tiana. I don't know Adventure Tiana. Yeah. So, like, I'm not, I'm not drawn to it. And then who is the other? Mirabelle. Oh, Mirabelle. Well, that's, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, like what draws them together is that they made a wish and it came true. They made, they made their wishes come true. Oh, they are the hero of their own story. Well, I mean. Cinderella. Cinderella. What did, I mean, and okay. Adult meals are priced at $54 <laughs> per person. Uh, children's menus are priced at $34 each for ages 3 to 9. Dinner is priced at $66 per adult and $49 per child ages 3 through 9. I've heard good things about the gumbo and the strawberry soup. Those seem to be like the must-haves. And yes, you can use your Disney dining plan there. Do you think our children would try strawberry soup? Yes. Now, would they try gumbo? I would try the gumbo as I long as there was no seafood. I can't. I I don't think either of them would try gumbo. Yeah. Uh, Charlie might if Tiana asked her to try the gumbo. You if think? Tiana came over and was like, try the gumbo, she might give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Lily would look Tiana dead in the face <laughs> and say, like, no, no, it's not happening. <laughs> Uh, okay, a couple more quick updates. Uh, Autopia, if you're familiar with that over in Disneyland, they that's getting an update that's like would be similar to the Tomorrowland Speedway in Disney World. Uh, they are replacing their gasoline engines that uh, have been powering the cars since the beginning uh, with new electric or hybrid power sources. Can you imagine how nice that would be to like walk near? The, I would just call them the race cars. Right. I never, like, say their proper name. Yep. And not, like, cough your lungs it's out and want to die. It's loud and smelly. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that, and if, if, for those of you who, you know, live in California and go to Disneyland often, I'm sure you have experienced the loud smell of the Autopia. <laughs> uh, no word on if that's going to change in uh, Tomorrowland Speedway, but I would imagine if it's, like, a successful transition. You'd think it would be. Yeah, I'm shocked, actually, that they're, like, gas engine things. Like, if you're constantly, like, filling tanks, and Mm -hmm. that's got to be more expensive than just charging things. And so smelly. I always felt, I always, every single time I walk by there, I, like, take a moment for the cast members working there (laughs) all day. Like, the headaches they must have. Uh, All right, so is Casita going to be coming to... Animal Kingdom. As we know, Imagineers took a trip to the Yucatan Peninsula so they could learn about the art, culture, and archaeology of Mayan. Since they have returned from this trip, they've begun working on 3D models to help them figure out what they want to do, and apparently a model was spotted with Casita from Encanto. Very exciting. So you, you too will one day get to uh, be Mirabelle and walk up to the door and have it crush your soul as it did Maribel <laughs> and ruined her for years for 10 years of trauma yeah that can be you I mean I already have a good solid 10 years of trauma at least it'd be magical Disney trauma <laughs> yeah this is what's one more trauma <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I can just imagine a little kid pre- <laughs> walking up to the door expecting some magical experience and it's just a door yeah it doesn't do like, anything. oh no oh uh, <gasps> What do you think your your like gift would be? What would my gift be? Yeah, uh, I would love to uh, just not have. I would love to have less social anxiety. Like that would be great for me. 
<laughs> what? Okay. Like to be able to have like a confident conversation with another human being other than you. Like, okay. Yeah, that would be my power. That's nice. Uh, I've always said I'm very good at speaking in front of large groups, but like if I'm just supposed to have a one on one conversation with one person, <laughs> can't happen. Sorry. You're doing it right now. Yes, you. Oh. That's that's why I tricked. I had to marry you. That's why. <laughs> if I didn't marry you, I would have no one to talk to. <laughs> if you went up to the Encanto door, what yes. would your power be? What would you want? Okay. I want to pick a power that hasn't been picked. The healing one was pretty cool. Yeah. Talking to animals, very cool. Hearing people and like their thoughts. Or, like, whispers. Yeah. You don't need that. I don't need that at all. The weather. That would be. That would be. But you don't get. You need your own power. I know. Hmm. The power to control people. But that feels almost villainous. Yeah. You know what I think you would want? You need the ability to do multiple things at once. Like, if you could, like, split yourself off to cover different. Oh. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. You wear, I could you, use that. You wear a lot of hats. No, nope. I mean, yeah. other than your pink one. Uh, so, yeah, if you could just get multiple abbeys to help you that with all your hats. Freaking cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I want to be that person. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, like, pass it off like the abbey that plays with Charlie and yeah. the abbey that plays with Lily. Like, I want those experiences. Yeah. Abby that does the dishes, she can, like, I don't need that experience. Right. But, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, is that it? That's going to do it for the news. Okay. It's time for the mini vacay ad. Do you want to use the same mini vacay ad or do you want to add anything into that? Do the same one. So today's episode is sponsored by mini vacay. Mini vacay is a partner of gateway to magic travel doing business as gateway travel an authorized Disney vacation planner and Disney earmark agency. If you would like to learn about planning a Disney or universal vacation please reach out to us at minivacay.com slash quote you and liz not me and you i'm not part of Mini yeah Bay. not him i can't he help just you shows up. i can't help you at all do you want to talk about how you can save up to 30 percent off disney world hotels if you book a stay of five nights or more sure a new promotion that came out from walt disney world this week is certain dates from July through October? July 8th to October 3rd. Thank you. Certain days from Ju- from July 8th, 2024 to October 3rd, 2024 will qualify for up to 30% off Disney vacation packages where you stay five nights or more. And there is a discount for less nights, but five nights is the, is like the best. Mm-hmm. You can save 25% on shorter stays. Yep. So if you're interested in learning about uh, a Disney vacation and what that would cost, um, please reach out to minivacay.com slash quote. I feel like it's important to share with everyone. My uh, hat? Your hat is fantastic, but oh. as it's being an audio medium, some people might not be able to appreciate your hat. The YouTube people will, though. So if you don't watch the YouTube channel, you're really missing out. Um, but Are no- you recording? Yes, I'm recording. Oh, do you want me to explain my hat? Do you- sure, go ahead and tell everyone about your hat. I had to suit up for the episode because this is my park hat. I purchased it at Magic Kingdom on our last trip. It is obnoxious. And I love it. And I don't think I can wear it around in real life here in Iowa. But... It's my perfect park hat. It's pink and it has silver embroidery around the bill and it has a giant, giant embossed D atop Cinderella's castle. It's a fantastic hat. Thank you. No, what I wanted you to share with, uh, oh. you know, you and Liz are doing mini vacay stuff. You guys have like a plan and a strategy tomorrow. I don't oh. know if you wanted to share sure. the kind of work you guys go into. It's it's not as easy as everyone probably thinks. Sure. So you just clicking buttons. Yeah. So part of the awesome free service you get with using mini vacay is that when you visit Disney, 60 days before you visit, your ADRs or advanced dining reservations open, as well as your experience reservations. So things like Savi's Workshop, Bibbidi Boppity Boutique, things like that. And so we have a large group going in 60 days that requires a Google Doc 
and all hands on deck. all hands on deck, several devices logged in to be able to get these reservations. And we get to wake up at 430 in the morning central time to be able to do that. And it's like Black Friday. It's like what Black Friday used to be. Right. So it's a lot of fun. Okay. All right. So <laughs> last week we gave Disney a hard time on their <laughs> non-announcements. Yeah. Uh, especially when it came to Beyond Big Thunder. Yes. And uh, if you are still unfamiliar with Beyond Big Thunder, if you perhaps didn't watch last week's episode, Beyond Big Thunder is... This is the rumored... But likely, but still very much rumored expansion that is happening beyond Big Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom Park in Walt Disney World, Orlando. So uh, what we decided to do is we were going to give our own pitches on what we would do with the 14 acres that are rumored to be expanding Magic Kingdom. As of now, there have been rumors that it will be Coco or Encanto or Villains themed, but uh, for us... It is up to us to do what we would want to do with this land. Uh, So I gave you several parameters to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, A certain number of rides, uh, a dining establishment, character experiences, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I came up with my own. So I thought we'd, you know, uh, share, you know, our ideas. Uh, I think we're going to go back and forth on this as opposed to just just like you listening to me talk and then I listen to you talk. Okay. So I think what I'm going to start with, uh, I want to hear... The top. Give me give me the name of your world. Give me the theme. Give me a description. What did you come up with? Sure. Okay. Before I do that, though, I just want to say, laying in bed last night, this is what I fell asleep to, was me, like, imagining this land. And 14 acres in my head was, like, the size of Epcot. <laughs> I had so much. And then today when I Googled what 14 acres actually was, I was very disappointed. It's Galaxy's Edge. So I had to really scale down what. So, so when, like, this is like the best. When you the looked best. at my list and I was like, two rides, you're like, two rides. I know. I was like, okay. Yeah. So this is all about food and, <laughs> and characters and parades and fireworks. Got it. This is my perfect park. All okay. Right. So name, theme, and description. <laughs> okay. So my area is heroes and villains is kind of like the theme. Okay. So they've tossed around the idea that the villain, we, there's been rumors for years that it would be called Dark Kingdom, and I love that. So I still kind of want to go off of the Dark Kingdom, but basically the theme is a land full of our favorite villains and our heroes. And when I say heroes, I'm aware of the rule that it's not going to be like Marvel heroes. It's going to be Rapunzel. I was going to say, what are what do you qualify as heroes? Rapunzel is my hero because okay. she, one, we all know, for those of you who are unaware, Magic Kingdom has a beautiful bathroom. <laughs> That is dedicated to Rapunzel, and that's all she gets. And she needs justice. Yep. She has no ride. She has no restaurant. She has nothing but this gorgeous freaking bathroom. Yeah. And so, for me, it's like Rapunzel's revenge, and she, like, freaking gets what she deserves. Okay. And so, yeah. So, the hero is really just, like, Rapunzel. Okay. So, we're not talking, like... There's not Marvel. It's not Star Wars. It's not no Toy Story. It's, no, these are this, okay. These are your heroes it's, and villains. Yeah, fourteen acres, babe. Okay, I don't have room for these. Okay, people. that's perfectly. It's fine. basically the villains because they got to have like probably ten. Okay, like I'm being realistic about okay. this. They're gonna need a lot. Okay. Poor Rap- so in that sense, poor Rapunzel again, only getting like four acres. Okay. What is yours? Mine is uh so. Oh, I forgot to say my description. Okay, describe it to me. AI helped me. That's fine. <laughs> You'll, you'd know as soon as I read it. You'd be like, you did not <laughs> Okay. That. Okay. So Heroes and Villains is a land full of our favorite villains and heroes. Step into a magical world where forces of good and evil collide in an immersive experience like no other. Embark on heart-pounding rides and attractions where fairy tales come to life with exciting stories. But beware as villains are lurking, plotting to unleash chaos. That sounds like AI. <laughs> But it sounds fun, right? It sounds very fun. Uh, okay, so mine, I was really thinking about, like, what does the park need and what do I want? What do I want from this park? Keeping in mind the spirit of uh, yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. Okay. And I got to thinking of the things uh, the park has and what it doesn't have and who they're trying to compete with. You'd think with 
uh, epic universe coming out that I would say Disney Magic Kingdoms needs more thrill rides to compete with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying no. Let them do their thing. Magic Kingdom, focus on what you do. And that's bringing in families and kids and do that better and give them a more bang for their buck. So lean into your target audience and feel give them that like they're giving getting more for their money. OK, listen up, Disney. So <laughs> the other thing is I found it to be a travesty that the only Mickey Mouse ride Aww. is Runaway Railway. And it, it's so it's such a new ride. You get sprinkles of Mickey Mouse he, here and there throughout the park. OK, but there's no like one dedicated celebration of Disney and like of, of Mickey and Magic Kingdom. It, like Toontown. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I'm going to reference Toontown a lot in this. OK. Oh, you already win. So I didn't even think about to- I forgot about Toontown. So this is the magical world of Mickey Mouse. The theme is a celebration of Mickey Mouse throughout the years. Uh, it has this has the same whimsical design of Toontown. But whereas that's kind of like a small town where the tunes live. This is like the tune version of Disneyland. Like you walk in there and it's like Main Street ish, but it's toony. OK. OK. Des- a theme park designed by the tunes themselves. I want to go there. <laughs> that sounds fun. Uh, OK, so that's my description. Tell me about your first ride. OK, my first ride is Rapunzel's Magical Adventure. It basically is a ride that I think exists or will exist at Tokyo. The height requirement is 38 inches. And this is also definitely written by me. (laughs) (laughs) Climb aboard your very own boat. Climb aboard your very own boat. (laughs) No. (laughs) Climb aboard your very own boat to set sail on a magical adventure with Rapunzel and Flynn Rider to witness the breathtaking spectacle of floating lights. But watch out. You might end up in a runaway adventure to escape castle guards, goons, and Mother Gothel. All right. So what style of ride are we talking here? 38 inches. So it's going to be like first, it's going to be like a bit Peter Panny. Okay. But also a boat, water, naturally, okay. Disney. But I want there to be elements where it feels like like fast and waterfalls, right. but also like beautiful with sure the lights. So 38 inches is equivalent to... Uh, Smuggler's Run and yes. um, Slinky Dog is 38 and Snow White, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is mm-hmm. 38. Okay. Well, I guess maybe you could have little kids. Maybe it's more like a frozen ride. Okay. Where a baby could go on it. Sure. I don't know. It seems how, advent- I don't know how adventurous we're getting. Okay. But there, I know it would be fun, but it also could be a little scary. Okay. Because, you know, goons and guards. Yeah. Mother Gothel. Absolutely. Mother knows best. This first ride uh, over in the magical world of Mickey Mouse is called Mickey's Steamboat Bonanza. Uh, no height requirement because, uh, as I've stated, we're trying to get all the pe- all the kids on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so join Mickey on this wacky boat ride. Think Runaway Railway meets Frozen Ever After. As we journey through 100 years of Mickey Mouse, we uh, you know throughout the ride we see various incarnations of Mickey. We see Mickey and the Seal. We see the Little Whirlwind. Brave Little Taylor, like all these Mickeys throughout the years, uh, et cetera. You get it. Can we leave out opening day Disneyland Mickey? Yeah, yeah that, that <laughs> creepy that creepy Mickey isn't here. Okay. Um, and then the queue for this ride is similar to the queue uh, over in Disneyland for one Runaway Railway. The El Capi Toon Theater, where it's like mm. you go in and it's like memorabilia of all of Mickey's like when he was doing the movie. So you see like props and costumes from these Mickey shorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there's also various interactive elements, you know, like if you go into, I think it's like Goofy's house out there, there's like a ball game and stuff. Uh, This is, these are all, this is all the cue that gets you uh, to the steamboat. It's like Dumbo where kids can play. Yeah. Like like the, like the circus Mm -hmm. as you, as you wait. I want to go there. I know that's a problem with these (laughs) is you're going to want to go there. I and know. you can't. I know. Only in your dreams. You should just go work for Disney. I know. Just, they, they'd be like, so how do I make this? I'm like, that's, that's not what I'm here for. That's your job, guys. Yeah. I'm just the ID man. Tell me your second ride. Ride number two. Okay, so ride number two, I am going opposite of what you said with I'm giving one big scary ride. Okay. For the older kids who maybe 
don't love Magic Kingdom as much because it is geared towards the classic rides, which sure. I love and appreciate. But for those who need There's like, a demographic that is not a fan. Yeah. I get it. So this is Dark Kingdom's Villainous Vortex. I also totally made that up. This is a height requirement of 48 inches, which matches... I've never heard what? you use the vor- word vortex once. It, V, villain, I get it, it goes together. Um, it's 48 inches, which matches the Incredicoaster. Brace yourself for an adrenaline-pumping roller coaster experience and a foreboding lair to the most infamous Disney villains. You will race through the shadows of the dark Disney layers with whirling twists, turns, drops, and loops. Feel the rush of wind and intense sensations as you narrowly escape the clutches of villainous schemes. So in my head, this was like like a dark, spooky forest okay. kind of setting. So it like starts inside, and then you like see like the witch from Snow White making her apple mm-hmm. and Maleficent and like all the, I don't know, all the good, like... Yeah, classic villains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right on. But you're going really fast on a roller coaster, too. Yeah. Would it be faster than Velocicoaster? I mean, no. We're not. We're not universal. We're not going We're wild. still staying in our lane of Disney. Okay. But, like, it's more, you know, it's like Tron, but okay. longer. Okay. And it does go upside down. Ooh, you got a loop in there? Okay. 48 inches. Yeah. Okay. Ride number two for me. My second ride is called Uh Do Mini. So this is inspired <laughs> Hold by on. Uh Do Mini. It's like a perfume. <laughs> and what <laughs> Inspi- inspired by the 2014 short of the same name. Uh mini, you know, Mini doesn't she needs a ride of her own. Mini's fancy. It's just like, uh? what are these three and four year olds uh? saying? Just uh? the mini ride? Yeah, the mini ride. But it's uh, do Char- mini. Charlie would go. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> well, she will at the end of this. Inspired by the 2014 short of the same name, Minnie's new perfume has enchanted the whole city. This spinning dark ride, you control the spinning like Roger Rabbit. Oh, OK. OK, mm-hmm. so it's a dark ride. But you control your spin. Takes you through the city as you try to avoid mobs of people uh, and animals who are chasing you because they love you. Because her oh, new it's perfume. Like a Pepe Le Pew. Exactly. Okay. But she doesn't want that. She put on the new perfume for Mickey. She was not expecting this attention. So this ride, similar to Ratatouille, where there's like all the smells, we get lots of, you know, beautiful smells oh, okay. from her perfume. But in order to escape the mob, she realized she has to get stinky. So towards the end oh. is stinky smells. So it's like wet garbage and stuff like that. And yes. then at the end, when she finally is so stinky, then the mob leaves everybody safe and she can have her date with Mickey. But yeah, it's going to be a smelly, spinny ride. Well, Disney's really into smells right now. Yep. What's the Epcot thing? smell a No, it's at Magic Kingdom. It's with Dumbo, the smell of fence. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsored They're, by Scentsy. Yeah. Yeah. That everybody is very pumped for. <laughs> Uh, Okay, so the next topic was you could do a third ride or a show. So what did you go with? Very simply, I want the Beauty and the Beast ride from Tokyo. Just that's it? Yep. That's all you need? And if you're like, but wait, how does this work? In my world, the Big Thunder expansion loops around. So this part is like right behind Gaston's. Okay. In my head, it like connects. Gotcha. So if you're like, oh, that doesn't work. No, it does because we're going to that way. I got it. So if it circles, you can go Fantasyland. From Gaston's, or you can go Big Thunder Mountain. The mountain will lead you into like the villains, mm. you know, like bald. What is that bald eagle? Night, Night on bald, bald mountain. mountain. Yeah, Fantasia. Like it'll go under there, but over here we get Beauty and the Beast. You're uh, welcome. My steamboat connects to the Tom Sawyer Island watery part. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could get rid of that. Tom Sawyer. Yeah, I I don't think you'd see, have too many people putting up a fight if they got rid of Tom. Oh, Sawyer. I bet you'd have a lot. You'd have some people. You'd I don't think it'd be, I don't think it'd be as many people as you would expect. Probably not as many people under forty. But yeah. Uh, all right. So I decided I wanted a show. Okay. Wow. What? I, you hate shows. I I want. I wouldn't hate this show. Uh, originally, I was going to pitch a ride for Potato Land, <laughs> but I want to do something else with the goof. Okay. So this is a show the great goofy. called How to Stunt a Gooftacular Spectacular. Okay. Now, 
the reason the word spectacular is in there is every stunt show, for some reason, has the word spectacular in it. Indiana Jones has the word spectacular. There's the Bourne's stuntacular, the Waterworld riot, or Waterworld show is a spectacular. So this is how to stunt a gooftacular spectacular. Now, if you're familiar with the old goofy cartoons, they were always things like how to play baseball, how to fish, and he would have wacky adventures and they would have a narrator over it as he taught oh, you yeah. how to fish. Okay. So this is um, a hilarious stunt show starring Goofy as he does very silly stunts the whole time narrated by this with this classic voice. Is the narrator on stage with him? No, you never see the narrator. Oh, okay. The only, You'll only see Goofy and whatever stunt His people. Guests. Yeah. Cool. So that's my stunt show. I like that. So tell me about the dining establishment over in <clears throat> Heroes and Villains. Okay, so I'm going to be real with you. The only really area I got to is the snacks. And I told you this the other night. So because I'm all in on the Rapunzel theme and because it's not fair that Disneyland has such better snacks than us, mm-hmm. the one I really want is the pretzel okay. bread. It's like a loaf of pretzel bread that's like Parmesan yeah. garlicky. Yeah. And I feel like give me one of those with like a nice braid mm-hmm. and you could tie into like her hair. Absolutely. And then. Is this the Snuggly Duckling? Sure is. It, it absolutely is, yeah. <laughs> what what a great idea. <laughs> what a great idea. And then the drinks could have a little duck on them. Yep. There is a there is a drink somewhere that has I think Disneyland might have a snuggly duck rubber ducky on it. So really that's like the snack I need the most. Okay. And then the other one, obviously, I thought it would be really cute in the villains area to have like a cart where they're like dipping apples. Sure. I get it. I mean, it. it's confusing. Yeah. It's like little kids. You're not kids. supposed to yeah. eat it. Yeah. But I mean. It's right there. It's right there. Literally low hanging fruit. Nice. Okay. So the dining establishment I have. Uh, first, I've got a quick service. This is called Chef Donald's Wadlin Waffles. Now, originally it was just going to be called Chef Donald's, but I didn't, you know, there's Chef Mickey's. So I thought, let's put a little extra oh, sauce on this sure, one. Sure, sure, sure. So the reason we're going this route is because of the classic short Chef Donald. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Chef Donald, basically a 1941 short of the same name, the signature dish he uh, was making in that uh, was waffles. So uh, at this quick did service. Did you like research this or did you yes. just know this? No, I, p- uh, well, first off, it's a great cartoon and you should watch it. And I have seen so it. you seen it. I have seen it. Okay. Uh, but yes, I did do research into this. I do a lot of work for this show. I know you do. I wish, I wish my... My casita power existed, so I could have put more effort into it. Uh, so the signature dish uh, for us uh, in this at, at Donald's Chef Donald's Wadlin Waffles is obviously going to be the pat of cake waffles. Uh, <laughs> after, as he was singing pat of cake, pat of cake, baker's man, as he was making his waffles in the short, uh, they are going to be the 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 dishes are going to be uh, breakfast carbs, so waffles, pancakes that have Disney uh, Donald's face on it, fresh fruit, iced coffee, ice cream. That's what we have at this quick That's service. So cute. Uh, but what is important, as the fans of this short know, is that there are some mix ups happening when he was making these waffles. Oh, and some rubber cement got in it. And his waffles in the short did not turn out well. But I will let you know, in the 83 years since that short came out, <laughs> he has perfected the recipe. And you do not need to worry about rubber cement being in these bad boys. Oh, that's such a relief. <laughs> so we also have a snack service mm-hmm. uh, over in the Magical World of Mickey Mouse. This is called Chip and Dale's Nut Stand. <laughs> so I mean, well, you could imagine it's a variety of roasted nuts. There will be bottled beverages for you to purchase as Naturally. well. Naturally. How much would roasted nuts cost at the Magic Kingdom? <laughs> I could only imagine. Like $30 a bag? Uh, the signature dish is the cinnamon toasted nuts. Mm. Uh, and at the cart, you can go and you know how some carts, uh, something like popcorn stands, they have like little animatronic popcorn guys. So this would be little animatronic Chip and Dale's roasting the nuts. Solid. I, Approved. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next, I wanted you to come up with a character experience. What do you have? Hold on. All I can think about, I love one of my favorite shorts growing up was Chip and Dale and them stealing nuts out of a tree. It's like every Chip and Dale short. I know, but I don't remember what it was, but I, it's, I just love it. So I just imagine like a little Chip and Dale. I love it. I wish you're, I wish it was coming true. 
Okay, what was your question? What's your character, your character experience? So, the big ta-da to do, wham bam, for my villain land is Maleficent's castle. I mean, it's not going to be obviously bigger than Cinderella. Than Cinderella, and you can't see it like unless. It's that Disney magic where you don't see it and experience it until you're there. And so I want Maleficent's, like, the vines and the thorns thorns. and all of that. And then the experience as a character meet and greet. Kind of like what they do in um, Fantasyland at, what's it called? Oh, like with the four princesses? Yeah. What is it called? I don't know. I just know it's Cinderella and Elena and then the other ones. It would be an experience like that. I'm, like, drawing a blank right now. But it would be, like, probably, like, six characters. Like, it would be a big deal because it would be, like, you tour the castle. Okay. But, like, the castle rooms kind of change to make, like, to match the villain you're meeting. Nice. So, like, Dr. Facilier would have, like, a cool, Mm -hmm. like you know, witchcraft room and yeah. Maleficent. Like, I don't know if you do like the thimble, like what scene, and but the like spinning wheel basically. So you'd get like the, the experience would be like going through the castle, meeting the villains. And then, yeah. Uh, so my character experience would be, obviously it'd be meeting Mickey and Minnie. Mm-hmm. Um, so would you make it right? And you'd move Mickey from, I would probably square kick him out of town square and take Minnie from back in, and put them together. I would put them together in this area. So uh, this is what would be made up um, in a place I'm calling the Mickey Mouse Animation Studio. Mm-hmm. So it's similar to the real life Walt Disney Studio Animation Studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one is, you know, whimsical. And so that you would meet uh, Mickey and Minnie there. It's your, kind of your standard Mickey and Minnie meet and greet. Only this time you never know which Mickey and Minnie you're going to get. So like which outfit is it going to be from throughout the years? Oh, you know, that. I know you can get Sorcerer's Apprentice over in Hollywood, but maybe you could get him in Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'd die he'd be like the 50s where he was supposed to be like a nice conservative man with like a flat hat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like maybe you're getting that one. Yeah. Um, maybe you're getting just classic Mickey with like red red pants. red pants and big yellow shoes. Like you never know which one you're going to get. I love that. And it changes throughout the day. It's not by day. It's like. Throughout the day. Crap. So you'd have to stand in line all day to get like all the Mickeys. Yeah. If you, well, if that's you, if that's your goal. Well, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to get all of the Mickeys. Okay. Uh, okay. So then the last thing on your uh, choice was other. So this could be any other thing you just want to, you know, add to your, any, any little extra magic you want to sprinkle on your land. Well, I forgot that I did have a table service idea. Okay. And it was going to be a table service in the villains area because we already have like the, again, Rapunzel, four acres. And it would be Disney Channel movie villains. Okay. Like the character, meet and greet. So it'd be like the Descendants kids. Okay. And maybe some zombie kids. Okay. And like, you know, the fun Disney Channel movie villains. Sure. I don't know the other. I don't know that I have, like, an other, other than I just want it to exist. Okay. (gasps) What if? Freaking what if? (laughs) What if we did, like, a villain Bibbidi Boppity Boutique? Okay. Where you could, like, get dressed up as villains. But then also, what if there was, like, a place in the Rapunzel area where you could braid your hair and put flowers in it and get, like, the long braid. That would be very I've fun. i always wanted my hair braided with flowers in it like that. Yeah. What's stopping you? Yeah. I'm going to do that. Okay. And maybe you could buy a little... No, I bet that would be a bad choice. I was going to say, like, but maybe we could sell, like, little frying pans. Yeah. But I feel like it'd just be, like, yeah, you're kids just, unleashed. Yeah, you're just unleashed. asking for trouble with that one. <laughs> frying pans. Imagine Charlie. Yeah. Loose with a frying pan. I was nervous when the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique gave her a wand because that had weight to it. I know. Any like, oh, do you know what else I want? Okay. One more thing. I don't know how it would make it work, but I really want, maybe we'll just do like a quick little sprinkle over by, by the Little Mermaid ride. Okay. I want the aerial rock. Where like, you could like pose and do like a photo pass. Yeah. yeah. And they like put the. And like a magic shot. They put, put the waves, waves behind, behind it. you. Yeah. Because like every time 
I mean, I did this too. And I feel like Lily, we have video of Lily doing I'm it. Sure. And even now, like Charlie, whenever she has like the opportunity of like a flat <laughs> surface, yeah. she like does the part of your world. world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's it for me. Uh, all right. So this is the last thing for me. My other in the magical world of Mickey Mouse. This is going to be the part that truly makes it the magical world of Mickey Mouse. Uh, this is going to be similar to what they do over in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, where various places throughout the land, if you have purchased a wand, you're able to stop and do magic. Uh, so in the magical world of Mickey Mouse, if you have purchased the magic gloves and the sorcerer's apprentice hat, you will be able to stop at various places throughout the land to perform magic, make things move, make sounds, make things spray water, uh, things like that. I love that so much. <laughs> That's so good. Now, will we be able to get walking brooms? That's for of the. Of course we could. That's the Imagineers to figure out. <gasps> that would be so cool. Yeah. That would be so cool. If it's like, uh, they have those little droids walking around Galaxy's Edge. You can get walking brooms. They have a freaking Christmas tree running around Disney Springs. Mm-hmm. We could definitely have brooms. Douglas is his name. Of course he knew is that. Doug- is Doug- Douglas uh, first? Yes. Yeah. I want to go to yours so bad. <laughs> like, mine's fine, and I would really be excited. I just, your size really bad. I told you when I made this, I was like, it's a great park, and you're going to yeah. be very sad you can't actually go to it. You should really, like, email Disney. I'll just send them this podcast. <laughs> All right, so let's close out the show. I did tease I was going to ask you something. You did? Yes, I said it. What is the one thing at Disney World you will always pay money for? Oh. Anything that seems like a silly upcharge? Literally anything. Look at my hat. No, I'm talking about, like, is there a service that you think... You wouldn't need that you used once and was like, I will get this every time now. Well, memory maker. I will. I love Photo that. pass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, extended evening hours. Yeah. So good. Yep. Is this like, are we on the right track or like a no, bubble th- just wand? anything. No, I, it, I will pay for a but I will pay for a twenty five dollar no. balloon Why? and a thirty dollar bubble wand every single time. Those I would a not. lollipop. I will get a Disney lollipop every single time. Those are like my staples. Okay. And uh, now apparently popcorn. I have been sleeping on the Disney popcorn. <laughs> I I get it now. Uh, I would de- I would agree with the photo pass. Um, I think that, you know that upcharge is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, just having that and being able to like stop and get like nice pictures taken places. Uh, I have big regrets that we didn't have the time to do it after the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. I think renting. Getting a stroller from a stroller service as opposed to bringing our stroller from Iowa, like mm-hmm. uh, shout out to Kingdom, King, strollers. Kingdom Strollers. Yes. Yeah. Also not having a stroller. So we rented a stroller from the service called Kingdom Strollers, which we have an affiliate link if you'd like to help us out with that. But what's nice is if you rent a stroller at Disney for like the park, you have to return it before you leave. Yeah. But what you might not understand or realize if you've never been before is especially for like Magic Kingdom, you don't just get to leave. Yeah. You have to like wait in line to either take the monorail or take the boat or go to the buses and it can be like i think it was an hour yeah it's leaving. a it's a job especially if you're doing it like right after the fireworks when yeah. everybody's doing it so having your kid with like this absolute sea of people mm-hmm. and still having a stroller or even just like walking your resort like it it was still it i mean some of these resorts are so large that when you get off the bus um or even like if you're driving your car and you park your car you're gonna walk 10 minutes just to get to your room so yeah having a stroller outside of the park is really nice yeah and kingdom strollers they brought it to our hotel they brought to our picked it up from our hotel yep it came with a rain guard it came with cup holders it came with like this little velcro pouch that we put phones in yeah and it collapses much easier than the our home stroller so like yeah getting on and off the bus because when you get on and off the buses you have to collapse your stroller yeah so, yeah. Uh, uh, another thing I will pay money for is the minivan. Yeah. So mini, mini as a mini mouse van. Yes. Yeah. Because we Ubered a lot, too. And like, that's fine. I like, got nothing against Uber, but like having a driver that is also a Disney cast member and knowing you're having like a nice clean ride and being a, something you can trust mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, just having the experience of like putting your kids in this polka dotted van, like 
pay them it it's worth the upcharge to get the the minivan yeah putting your kids and putting myself in driving <laughs> around in the polka dotted mini it was amazing <laughs> All right, well, make sure uh, you remember to leave a review on, if you're listening to this on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. If yeah. you are watching the YouTube channel, uh, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, what's one thing you will always pay money for at Disney World? Or what's something you will never pay money for again? That, those are also helpful tips. Yeah, and if you're still here, thank you so much and just say hi. That's fun. Yeah. And let us know which land you'd rather visit. Heroes and Villains or, or the ma- Mouse. Magical World of Mickey Mouse. God, even your name is better. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And follow us on Instagram at Big Thunder Pod. If you have a question, you can always shoot us an email, uh, BigThunderPod at gmail.com. That's going to do it for the show. That's it. It's bedtime. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See you all soon. And enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs>